guys, what's cracking back out here in the garage? Actually, stepping over pallets right now because we're trying to clean things up uh, from the title of this. Let's go test this out. I want to see how fast this car is. It seems like the new benchmark is this 60 to 130 thing that people keep asking me. I don't know. I don't, I've never really cared. Uh, but now I've posted these racing videos on Instagram, which you can see here. You ready? So, as you can see there, I've been racing, I raced that GTO, I raced BB's GTR, and the car seemed to do decently well. So, people were saying, you need to get a 6130, 6130, okay. Um, I don't know what a good time is. From what I saw, if I can do six seconds, that would be decent. Again, the car's still stock block. Um, the gearing's not exactly ideal. Uh, first gear and all those gear, I mean, it can go like 165 and fourth with only a 26 and a half inch tall tire. The, the gearing's wrong for it. It's a 3.76 with a T56 Magnum. It really needs a 410 rear end in it, uh, which would have been perfect from an NA Supra. So kind of ironic because this car had a five speed 410 rear end in it. Originally I got rid of it because I went R154. Then I was also told the 376 is ideal for this car. So today we're going to take this out. Curious to see how the car does. Um, let me know down in the comments. Before you guys do anything, let me know down in the comments below. Take your guess here. Uh, I also want to thank Mitch Coffin for letting me borrow his Dragon today. I personally don't own one, so thank you, buddy, very much. I appreciate it. Um, just to give you guys a basic rundown, if you haven't been here before, it's an S369 Turbo, stock bottom end, BC272 cams, very basic setup. It's on AM Infinity and E85. I run about 30 PSI of boost, which netted me 882 wheel horsepower and 750 torque on a Dyna pack. And then we used my friend's uh, Mustang Dyna and only made 700 wheel horsepower, but it made 740 foot pounds, which might have had something to do with the traction control being on. We don't know because I'm an idiot, didn't turn it off. Then again, I didn't know you needed to. So this would be a good hit test here today. Um, but I digress, let me shut up here and let's get inside the car. Go ahead and shut the hood here. Got that auto extrude cup holder, if you guys don't know, click down below or click up above. These things are freaking sweet, I use it all the time. Uh, it comes with a specific Red Bull holder too, which is really, really nice. But uh, let's get in here, grab the key. Did bring some extra filming equipment today too. Let it prime, let it prime, let it prime. See how we do here. I do have the clutch disabled, so it should be okay. Hold the brake just in case. Oh, she sounds healthy. She definitely sounds healthy. All right, let's get her out. All right, guys, so again, in the car right now, uh, heading over here to uh, Mexico real quick to meet Mitch. Uh, to try the 6130. Car's driving nice right now. I'm trying to keep the AC off too to try to keep temps down. It's almost 100 degrees here today. High humidity in Pennsylvania. So anything I can do. Uh, again, using the new camera. Let me know what you guys think. It's a Sony ZV-1. I've got the windows down. Um, this has a built-in mic. It has a built-in stabilizer. So seeing how well it actually does here. I forgot how nice this car is just to drive. It's just smooth. It's just so darn smooth. fantastic in this too. Sorry for the glare. It's probably not even going to pick up. It's hard to see, but the car just drives well. John Kerr has done a magical job on this vehicle and it just, oh, it just feels perfect. All right, guys. So made it up here to Mitch's shop. Mitch, thank you very much, buddy, for letting me borrow your draggy. No problem. Um, guys, I'll pop up the videos here. You can see what, uh, what happened. This is how it went right now. Yeah, that didn't quite go as planned. 
but thank you anyways. I it went six seconds. We went five nine five, and I forget what the other one was. Five nine nine. Here you go. It was five ninety five, and my, five, it was six seconds. Yeah, I wanted obviously you want to always go faster. You say six, but it would have been nice to go five and a half. I want to be fast like Sanford and Sons. Well, it's real fast right now, sitting here in the garage. Look how fast. No, I, I think I, how long ago was that video we did at the house? Oh, boy. Two or three years ago? Two years, maybe. Three. So, it's a Ford Ranger. It's pretty slow. Nothing to it. Just has a cage for looks and all that good stuff. I mean, it, what do you think the eighth mile will do? Maybe 10 seconds in the eighth? Yeah, on a good day? Like in the yeah, I figured as much. Yep. Got those race wheels up front. You the man. That's right, factory Ford race wheels. Factory stock. So what's in it? What's inside the hood? It's a stock engine. Oh, I figured as much. Well, that's all it is. It's a stock engine with a big radiator. That is a massive radiator you have there. Man, it's weird too. You've blacked it out and everything. Not much has changed if you'd like to see it. Yeah, I, I would like to see it, guys. Would you like to see it? Because I would. That's a high quality hood you have there, sir. Hey, it fits on there and doesn't need a towel, so. So is that the same? No, that's actual Borg Warner. You stepped up, sir. That is a 480. That is a big ass turbo. Cause you had an eBay turbo on it before, right? It had a like a 67 when it was at your house. And then since then I put a 75 on it, then a 76 and then uh, an 80. That, Still the same engine though. That is a massive turbo. It always cracks me up like seeing manifolds and this isn't, it's not unusual for this. Like I'm so used to like, the Honda or any Japanese game, like you have to have schedule 10 or schedule 40 headers. Yeah. And in like the American world, that's like not a thing. I just weld together whatever I have laying here. Yeah. So then the suspension is new. I don't believe you had that last time I yeah, saw it either. That's all changed to try to make it work better. Yep. It's got uh, double adjustables up front and I built all them strut mounts. So you built the strut mounts and stuff yourself or yep. built them yourself? Guys like that power brakes or lack of? So how does that work? You have no power brakes? No, it's manual brake. You don't need power brakes. Holy sh... I mean, it only goes... It's not, it's not as bad as you think being valved for manual brakes. It's not bad. Okay. I know a lot of super guys are going to, like, I think it looks so similar to that, but Buck Performance and those guys make something like that. Especially once you put a big enough cam in it, you're running, you're taking all the vacuum out. It doesn't even work yeah, anyways. It, does, it doesn't work unless you have, a, like, a booster or an electric pump on it. Yep, so. exactly. So I guess at a certain point, is it even worth it? So the intake manifold on it, that's... Um, that is new, actually. Yeah, what is that? Because that doesn't look like a typical LS intake manifold. That is manifold. a truck intake off of, like, an 09 or newer. I okay. The big four-bolt throttle bodies. Okay. It didn't have a three-bolt on it. So that's one upgrade, but that's about it. It's dope, man. I love this setup. I love sit the, I should say simplicity, but there's definitely a good bit of money in it. By looking at it, you would be like, oh, no, there's not that much money involved, but there is. It's kind of like... Um, the TV show, right? Yeah. That, that guy's truck looks like crap, but he's probably got 100 grand in it to now by now, and like I mean, yourself. Engine, not so much. I mean, I probably have 20, 25 in this truck. I mean, say, but to, say it, but yeah. engine wise, that's the cheapest thing on a truck. It's literally a stock bottom end 5.3 with gap rings and the most expensive piece on it is a set of head studs. The ARP head studs, I'm assuming? Yep. Now, to some woman or some other guy who see this though, and you would tell them you've got twenty to twenty-five thousand in this, they would say you're oh, crazy. They think I'm an idiot. Yeah, but no one cares what they think because this is awesome. I love the I love the fact it runs here. I see the side exhaust here. Love that. And I do love the Sanford and Son on the side. Is there a reason for that? Or was that just something you're like bored one day and you're like uh, I've got to do this? It started in Frederick. I went down there and this guy was said, "Oh look, it looks like Sanford and Son because it was red and beat up." And the name kind of just stuck. And I ended up just taking a stencil and doing it on the side just like her truck, sloppy like that, and it turned out perfect. I love it. Been there ever since. We won't talk power. I don't think you guys like to talk about that stuff. We won't talk about power or anything. It's not like a big secret. It makes 800. Whew, that's still, that's still cooking with some gas. And it makes actual torque down low, which is the big thing. That's the biggest thing. Like, people don't understand, like if I say I make 800 horsepower and 750 torque, right? The difference is, mine's all up top, yours is instant. It has, it has a bit of mid-range, but I'm curious to see now with this turbo if it makes it a different spot, because that was for the 76 on it, so. Okay. We'll see. All right, guys, so we got back to the house here. You saw the videos, you saw everything. I'm happy, but I think you could do better. So there's a gentleman, uh, if you guys wanna go check him out too, on Instagram, his name's Mod Fame. He also has a YouTube channel, also called Mod Fame. Uh, go check that out. Super nice guy, he's based out of New York, New Jersey-ish area. 
they do a bunch of roll racing and stuff like that. He's got a very, very powerful Hellcat. I think he's at a thousand wheel horsepower, maybe even more. Obviously that car weighs a thousand pounds more than this. Um, but he said like on a good day, he runs like five, five to five, six. And like he watched a video and everything. He's like, dude, like you're right there with me. He's like, your car is definitely faster there than that. Uh, the road I obviously used wasn't the best, but still great. Mexico was not that bad. Uh, he's like, but on a better road, try it at night or uh, when it's a little bit cooler out. Right now it's like 95 and like I said, 90% humidity. It's insane here right now. Uh, it's not helping things. I do need to also move my IAT sensor once again. So my IAT sensor is here, which isn't bad, but it's getting all the heat from the fan over here, which isn't ideal. There, uh, it's not exactly ideal, but it works for the most part. Could be worse. Um, but it's showing some wonky temperatures at times. Everything else is good though. Uh, doesn't overheat, stayed around 170 degrees the entire time. I barely ever get anything in my overflow tank. The other day I did because I got up to like 220 uh, with the AC on, wasn't paying attention. I don't even have the electric fans you're supposed to run down here. I have any of that stuff. Uh, I just literally have the factory mechanical fan um, and that's it. I don't even have the bottom piece to the fan shroud here, it's missing. Uh, so all you see is the top piece, that's the only thing I have, plus that mechanical fan spinning around. That is it. Very, very basic setup. Part of me wishes I did have a VVTi now. Again, I bought this years ago, VVTi was still kind of taboo. That was 2013, 2014. Um, there were some people doing it, but it wasn't as in the forefront. Now, all these people that told me you don't want one are the same people buying them. So it's, diff it's weird how things change and times change, uh, what people are working on and buying. Uh, the only issue I'm really having is I'm still getting so much blow by in my catch can again that comes down to these OCD works covers physics when I go to take off all the oil sloshes the back goes in those and fills this up. It actually doesn't have that much blow by if the fittings were on the side like my wife's engine is here for hers. Uh, I use these radium press in fittings on hers. If I would have used those style fittings or done something like that with AN fittings I don't think I would be having the issue so I could go back to these style valve covers. Um, but I really like the look of those plus they're built aluminum. They're pretty trick. So uh, it, it's got me in like a spot where I'm like, do I want to, do I want not want to? Got spider webs all over this. So that's where I'm at right now. But besides that, it does everything else great. I just hate that it does go through oil. I'm constantly adding oil in it just because it's blowing by so much. Um, I'm lucky that catch can is big enough to hold it. Uh, Chris at Night Run Garage and his partner Ben are also working on a new catch can setup So I can't wait to show you guys that it's gonna have like a cool trick little filter system on it I'll show you guys that though when it's all finished and on that note guys. Thank you very much for tuning in today I hope you're liking videos like this I'm hoping to go out more and maybe get some of the street racing videos and stuff It's hard for me because that stuff is so late at night. Uh, we're usually early risers here so when those guys are going out at 12 one night, I'm like crashed, I am done. So I need to start training myself to do that because those are the kind of things I'd like to see more of and I know you guys would like to see more of that. Again, thank you guys very much. Go check out the Facebook, Instagram, also have TikTok if you like that kind of stuff. Thank you guys very much and I'll talk to you later. Peace.